Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's user group. Give people a second to get in here, and then we will get started. All right, we're going to get going. So today we are talking about sugar serve. Um, we all know customer service is a very important aspect of any business. And sugar serve is a tool built specifically for facilitating those actions. And so what we wanted to do today was kind of talk about how sugar serve works and use the real life use case of our own company and how we use it here. So you can get an idea of, of how it works in the real world. Your hosts today are myself, Deneen Madura, the Director of Marketing, and Justin Kielthau, the Director of Services. If you've been with us on a user group before, you know the drill. Um, Justin's gonna go through this information and if at any time you have questions, you can throw those into the chat and we will happily answer them. Um, and then of course, I will always uh, send a follow-up email with the recording. And if there's any relevant documentation that goes along with that, that would be in that email as well. And we post those videos just for future reference um, on our YouTube page. And they're also available on our website all the time too. If you wanna go back months later, can't find the email, just go to our YouTube page or go to our website and you will find them. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Justin to take us through his agenda. Thank you, Deneen, and welcome to all of our attendees. Uh, this agenda is relatively long compared to most of our user groups. I'm kind of trying to talk through the life of a case as it comes into our sugar instance. And I'm going to try to show each of these steps as well. If you think I missed something or you have a question, please do speak up in the chat dialogue with Deneen so she can get those questions answered. Um, we're gonna talk about how cases get into sugar, what happens automatically with the sugar BPM process. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the first user update of the case, what we have to do, what fields are required and why. We'll talk about how we can respond to a case uh, and then what happens when a customer responds to our emails or via the portal. We have Sugar Live, I'm going to demo at that point. And then we're gonna talk about how we close out cases. And then I'm gonna kind of look at some more overarching functionality for how the SLAs and change timers occur within our system. We'll, we're gonna look at the, the service console and how we use that uh, for our weekly review cases or review meetings. Uh, and then potentially the Sugar Customer Portal, although I think we're gonna show that a little bit earlier. All right, next slide, Dean. Right, so we're going to start with how do we get cases into Sugar? Obviously, we as users can do manual case creation. We also have the ability for anyone who sends an email to support at techadv.com. Uh, those cases are created in Sugar. Or if there's a case tag in the subject line, those cases are added to an, or those emails are added to an existing case. And then we have the sugar portal uh, with the URL you can see there, and we'll show that in just a quick minute. So I will start sharing and, and kind of briefly see if we can go through that. All right, we should be looking at my test user, Mr. Lee Hogan in his Gmail account. I'm going to email support at techadv.com. We're gonna have an issue with the knowledge base and let's go ahead and send that. Now the sugar scheduler runs roughly every 60 seconds to check for new emails. So I, what I wanted to do first was jump into our sugar instance. And to start with, let's go ahead and go take a look at our admin settings for those inbound emails. 
let's see, scrolling down here, we come into our email section and I'm gonna look at inbound email. Here we can see support. Uh, creating a case, and this is active. So let's take a look at this. Uh, this is where you set up your emails. And this is kind of interesting. A couple of things I wanted to point out. If you look at the username here, we're actually logging in as cases2sugar at techadv.com. And the reason for that is when an email goes to support at techadv.com, a number of rules run to delete junk emails and process out other undesirable emails, such as some types of internal emails. And then emails that should process into sugar are forwarded to this email address, cases to sugar at techadv.com. At that point, this sugar inbound email rule uh, and, and scheduler will monitor the inbox and either create a case or attach the email to an existing case. In addition, as I mentioned, we do have our customer portal here where users can log in. Here I'm logged in as Mr. Lee Hogan. I can see a recently resolved case. Um, but within the Sugar customer portal, there's some cool functionality where you can do case deflection. What can we help you with today? Here it's searching the knowledge base uh, using their elastic search. Um, global search functionality for anything that might fit the issue. And then if it doesn't, I can create a case. I can also skip that and create a new case right from the button up here. When I'm on the create case screen, I can choose a product, whatever that might be. Set what the issue is. as well as a description. So let's try creating one from here as well as our other email that just came through. Okay, here it's telling me I've successfully created the case. We have an issue with the case. I can come into my cases list view and see that here. I can also see that email that I had sent created this case. I know that. And also in the portal, I could take a look at our knowledge base. And if I wanted to show our bugs entity, which I will show in a little bit within our Sugar CRM, I can allow users to search that as well. And of course, you can mark any knowledge base or bug article as internal or external. So you can hide them from the public as desired. Now I'd like to come over to my Outlook, actually. And when I come in here to Outlook, you'll see I'm on the support at techedb.com email list. So I get those emails. I saw this email come in from Mr. Lee Hogan. Sugar Connect is obviously showing me a lot of really good information about Lee Hogan over here, as well as any cases that may be related to it. There's only one showing here because this data has not refreshed with the two new ones we just created. Oh, there they are. I just had to click on it. You'll also notice I have a notification email coming from notifications at techadv.com. This is a BPM that's telling me a new case was created. It's giving me the account name, a direct link to the new case. It's going to our entire support team. So all of us are notified every time a case is created, it's giving us the case number. This is extremely useful because I can copy this and reply to the original email, putting that into the subject. And when I send that to support at techadv.com, it'll get, this email will get added to that case. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. Coming back to our notification, I just get the name and the description. So then one of us can quickly click the hyperlink to grab the case and work it as necessary. I'm actually going to jump back to my next slide here. Well, that's not going to work, is it? We'll just do it this way. So what happens when a case is automatically created in 
bigger CRM. We have a sugar BPM that fires. Again, it sent that automatic email to the customer to the to the support team so we know when new cases are created. It's also doing a number of different branches. We set our case aging and team fields. We then wait two days and if the case is still in progress, we send an alert to the user who has assigned the case. We then wait three more days and send another alert. So we're essentially keep alerting the assigned to user that they need to do something with the case. We also update the case aging and go into an infinite loop to remind the user every three days that the case is still open. We have a, this whole process is terminated once the case is closed. Our next branch is to ensure that our service level agreement with customers is met. We essentially wait two hours and if the case has not been updated within two hours, the first response SLA field is set to no. We add a note to the case that it wasn't updated in two hours. We alert the support team and loop through waiting another two hours. Adding another note, emailing the support team again and so on and so forth until the case is updated correctly. When the case becomes closed, the aging is wiped out and the process is terminated. We also have a branch that detects if the case was created from a portal or an email. If it was created from a portal, we assign the case to an unassigned user. And if it was from an email, we update the case priority after which both branches end. Uh, next, we have a branch that waits 24 hours, and if the case for some reason is still new, we alert our director of services and support manager. And finally, we have a branch that deals with the product. Depending on which product is selected, we send an email to the customer to tell them about support for their product. So let's, let's see if we can walk through all of that. I know that was a lot of information. Um, I'm actually going to jump through the next slide as well. Just I want to be able to show our first update of the case and what happens at that point. So when we're updating a case for the first time, we strive to update several important fields. The assigned to, the product, the primary contact if it's not auto-populated. We like to update the name of the case because that's important for later review of the cases. A lot of times the sub subject of an email coming in is just, I have a problem which is not descriptive. I want to be able to see in our CRM instance, a description of the problem, a very short description in the name field, as well as a useful description in the description field. And then we're always tracking our next steps. So let's jump into that. Let's go ahead and jump to our service console and refresh since we have a couple of new cases that came in. And see, we have a couple of triage cases here. These are cases that ha nothing have done, happened on them yet. Issue with the cash and issue with the knowledge base. This was the email one. I'm going to stick with this one for now. All I have to do is click on the subject and I can jump right there. A couple of things you'll notice. This is assigned to unassigned. I mentioned that that happens. Uh, we just like to have an unassigned instead of a blank assigned to. It makes reporting a little easier and filtering. We also have a follow-up date here. And this is set by the BPM for two hours post creation. This was created about um, a few minutes ago at 208. If I look at more information, 206, two minutes later, the BPM ran and set our follow up date for two hours out. And again, it's going to monitor for this product field changing. It did automatically find Lee Hogan based on Lee Hogan's email address. It also found his account name, Hogan Industries, based on that email domain, which is really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and click the unassign to. I'll go ahead and assign it to myself, just cause I'm gonna take this case. And this is an issue with a knowledge base. I often like to preface the name with the name of the company, just so in a list view, I can see what the case is about or who it refers to. And I see they're having an issue with the knowledge base. I'd probably update that later once I find out what the issue actually is. I can save this, but it's not going to let me. We have to select a product. I'm going to go ahead and choose our Sugar CRM and save that. So now it's letting me save that. You'll notice the follow-up date 
has now updated. I believe that's roughly eight business hours out. So whenever the follow-up date is met, me as the assigned to user is going to get a notification. Something really cool in SugarServe that we've started using a lot is the timers. You'll also notice we have a first response target time. This was that 2.15, roughly two hours after the creation date time. We have our first response actual time was 2.15. Actually, it must have pushed the target time here. Uh, first response sent, yes. First response user, Justin Kielthau. What's the variance from the target? Was the first response SLA met? Yes, and that is a two hour SLA. Business hours to first response, 0.16 hours. Hours to first response, 0.16. So you get some really cool uh, information here. You'll also notice we have hours to resolution and business hours to resolution that we'll see down here. We also have some change timers down here where it's sugar serve is automatically tracking change timers to, to important items. <laughs> So let's jump back to the ticket here. If I'm taking this ticket, I have a number of options for responding. I could come out here and respond to the case. Hi, Lee, thank you for the question. I'll look into it. And if I send that, this email is again going to be tracked because it's going to support as well as uh, it has that case tag in it. Another way we respond to is I can just simply click on this email here and reply right from within Sugar. Uh, I'm actually gonna cancel this. I wanna make sure I reply all just to make sure support is still copied on it. Otherwise, when Lee Hogan's response to my email, he, his email would not be tracked within Sugar. Sugar's also very good about adding our case tag there to make sure any replies Lee sends are going to be tagged as well. So now I can send this right from out of sugar. And this is coming from my own justin.keelthou at techkdv.com email address. You could set it up to send from support at techkdv.com. We just find it's easier to use our own for the most part, except for one or two people who are primarily on the support desk. Okay. Let's go back and look at our case. I'm going to click my drop down here and quickly get back to a record I was just working on. Another great way to get to data within Sugar CRM. All right. So now we've had a case created, a couple of cases actually. We've responded to those cases. Let's let's look where we're going to go next. We responded to the case. Then the customer is going to respond. They're going to add an email to the case. They're going to add a note created by the portal. They're going to have incoming phone calls. So let's see if we can look at that from Lee Hogan's, Hogan's perspective. Come over here to Lee Hogan. I have a email here from the TAI Sugar CRM. We have received your case. Please reply to this email if you have an update to this case. So they can reply to this email and that would get recorded into Sugar CRM. Uh, we have a note here about how we attach emails to the case, depending on the subject and who it's going to. Uh, we have information here about how quickly we're gonna spawn our SLAs, uh, as well as a link to our support portal. And then we even have some Sugar support guide out on our website that people can visit have you tried the following? What's included in my support plan? Opening a case with technology advisors. Again, we really try to point out responding to a case so we can get those emails tracked within Sugar CRM. And then when opening a case, please provide the following information. Having URLs is always extremely useful as well as a bunch of other information that might be useful to our customers. Jumping back to the inbox here, I have an email from Justin Kielthau where he said, thank you for the question, I'll look into it. I have another one from Justin where he said, thank you. Remember one was sent from Outlook and one was sent within Sugar. So now 
I'm the customer, I'm responding. I can come back to my cases here. Let's go ahead and look at our Hogan Industries issues with the knowledge base. As a customer, I can request to close this case right from this screen. I can add a note. And one cool thing is that um, I can include attachments where I could browse for as many attachments as I want and have those uploaded. And I believe in the next version of Sugar, there's even some en more enhancements to how attachments work within Sugar. Now I've created that note. I could preview it. I could download my own attachments if I want to. But let's take a look at what happens at this point. So now if I come back into Sugar, I'll refresh my screen since I should have some incoming data I can now see. Here I can see multiple emails, one from Justin Kielfeld that was outbound in that first inbound one. I have a note here. Let me jump back over here at, to Lee Hogan. And I'm just gonna quickly reply and say, oh. I need to reply to all. Thank you for the update send that so then we'll see this email from Lee Hogan get logged into that case as well. I have that note, I can click the preview button, I can see the attachment, I can very quickly download it right from here, all that good information. And now that I've, as the user, am moving forward, we track our status in two different fields. The status field can go to open, and it's gonna be in development, or we can put it on hold, and then we have to track why it's on hold. Is it scheduled for the future? Wait customer, wait TAI, wait vendor. Uh, lots of good information there. So I could mark this as wait customer. And pretty quickly, that email from Mr. Lee Hogan should show up in our email sub panel. But for the moment, let's jump back to Outlook and see what we've got there. Here we can see our thank you for your, the update. It went to Justin Kielthau. It went to support at techadv.com. We have our case number up here with the square brackets. Those brackets are very important. Again, Sugar Connect giving me lots of information about my contact. Yep, let's check here, see if that's available yet. It is not, but that's okay. Let's take a look at our next slide and see where that takes us. When we're ready to close out a case after communicating back and forth, we have to set the status and ticket state to closed and completed. If there was a bug we found, we wanna create a bug. So I'll walk through that very quickly. And why that's important is that we track defects in the bugs module of Sugar so we can link bugs to those cases. That way, if a defect or issue is ever resolved, we can easily see which cases we're being affected by that defect. And then as necessary, we can reach out to customers that opened a case about that defect. So to do that, let's refresh, see if our email came in yet. Nope, it's okay, it takes a minute sometimes. You'll also notice we had a change timer come in. I'm gonna go ahead and I see bugs down here. I'm gonna quickly add a new bug, defect. C1701 product, we'll just say it's sugar for now. We would provide a link to the portal for that. Put in the description, what release it was found in. And we can go ahead and save that. And then that's going to be linked back to our case here. So whenever new releases come out, I can quickly review, see if there's any bugs in our system that have been fixed and then go from those bugs to the cases and again, update our customers with that information. 
I can go ahead and close this now if we've taken care of it. Closed, completed, save. Some other cool things we have on the screen here is this dashboard over here. We have a comment log where we can call out people. And quickly add comments. We can see all cases related to the account we're currently looking on at, as well as history, et cetera. Okay. Now, I did want to walk us through the BPM. So let's take a quick look at our BPM list over here, open process definitions in a new tab. Again, Sugar is just a website. You can open as many tabs as you want. In my case, I've sorted by target module. I have one open or one enabled case BPM. There are a couple of other important BPMs in here with regards to service. There's one for notes, where if a note is added to a case via the portal, we want to notify uh, the assigned to user of that. There's also one for emails. If a new email comes in on a closed case, we want to be notified of that. But to start with, let's stick with our update case aging and send internal reminder notifications version five coming over here. This is that one I explained a little bit earlier. Perhaps I should have had it up when I explained it, but we can run through it again here. We have a new case created, which launches this whole thing. We have a parallel gateway that goes to a number of different paths. The first one up here waits a minute and then sends that new case alert we saw in my email to the entire support team. We update our case aging to less than three days. We track our case aging, which we'll see in a report in a little bit from less than three days old, three to five days old, and then more than five days old. And you can see that process here where we're waiting two days, update, wait three days, update to more than five days old, and then this branch just ends. This branch does split off here where we check to see if we have a product set. That was that very important product field that was required. If it's already set, we come down here and just start looping every three or eight business hours to check to make sure the assigned to is properly working the case. If the product's not set yet, it means nobody's edited the case, which means nobody's picked it up yet. So if the follow-up date gets reached, we say our SLA was not met at that two hours. We actually add a note to the case. That way I can build a chart of the number of notes created by week to see how often we're reaching our SLA or not. You know, the higher the bar chart, the worse it is. We alert that same support team of a case not updated within two hours. And then we do the same thing, except we are again checking to see if the product changed. So we keep looping through there, adding notes until the case gets updated. And then we come down and after the first uh, notification, we're setting the update to eight hours. And then we're no longer creating notes because we've at least contacted the customer and we're just looping around to make sure our internal people are working the case. Even if it's in the custo wait customer, we need to be following up with our customers. We have a small branch here where we monitor to see if the case becomes closed. If it does, we update our aging to be blank because I don't want cases to have an aging value if they're closed. And then that terminates the entire process. We have a branch down here. Again, I mentioned a monitor if it was created from a portal or an email. If it's created from manual, we just end the branch. If it was an email, we need to set the priority to medium. And if it was from the portal, we need to assign it to unassigned because the portal will often assign it via round robin. And we don't want round robin. We just want it not assigned at all. We also wait to see if we get a product type. What's the product? And if the product is one of our standard products that we have links to, we just send those right over to end we send that notification to the customer that we saw with important information and then we end that branch. Oh, 
Okay. We also have a weekly case review meeting. Oh, before I do that, let's bring up this email I just got. I got a notification, a new email has been received on a closed case and it has been reopened. Please see the case. So this is that note BPM I just mentioned. We can actually bring that up here. No, that was a new email on a closed case. I'm sorry. If I design this, it's just very simple. Reopen the case, email the assigned to, close. All right. That would mean that our email finally showed up in our sub panel here. Yeah, we got a few of them. We can see who it's from. We can preview that to see all of that good information here. Now, jumping back to our home screen, our service console, which is a big part of Sugar Serve, we see again that triage cases dashboard here, that case aging report. I can see the number of case cases that are in less than three days is seven, three to five days is four, based on the legend over here, more than five days is also at seven, and, and then see even who those are assigned to. And of course, I can drill down into those as desired. Open cases by user, my open cases by follow-up date, my open cases by status, my recently viewed cases. This is a very easy way for me to get back to the cases I'm working on. My case is resolved this month by week. And then my cases in the last week by status. So some cool information. We're always tweaking this page, making it more useful to us. And we're happy to help anyone go through that as well. And then lastly, the services console which I have filtered to Hogan industry cases, but this can show everybody's cases or just your own. You can do any filtering you like here. It's always sorted either, well, you can actually choose whether you wanna sort it by number or by follow-up date. And in this way, we can look at it, see any next steps. Let me actually update this. What would the next step on this? We always wanna have a next step. We put in the date here and a short note. Follow up to see if complete. Uh, it's actually notifying me of a conflict because the admin changed it from, oh, uh, the admin changed it to open in dev and I'm trying to change it back to close. That was a BPM that ran in the background while I had this case open. It's actually something you need to be aware of. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel my edit reload so I have the newest version of the case. Uh, again, that BPM reopen it. I can set my next step here. I can set that to follow up to see if complete. And then that would show on our services console. And that's a very quick way. If we have 30 open cases, I can just run down the list, see who did the last who made the last change or and who what the next step is and we can see did they actually follow up on that and by clicking on this i can get into all of the information whether it's the case information any related tasks contacts documents account information a case timeline here of what's happened with it any emails portal notes a lot of good information there. And then our comment log, and I can add a new one here. And we just go down the list as we are uh, working our cases. All right, that's just a very quick overview of how we do Sugar support using Sugar Serve. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Denise? Thanks, Justin. That was awesome. Um, 
Yeah, so as Justin said, this is how we use it. But as you could see by the complex workflows that Justin was building and the personalized dashboard, I mean, that's all stuff that, you know, you would have to adapt to your own processes and you have that flexibility with SugarServe and it's it's pretty straightforward on, on how to do that. Um, but as Justin mentioned, you know, if that's something that you're interested in doing or you want to look at the uses of SugarServe for your organization, you, all, you can always reach out to us. You can reach out to your customer success manager, or even if I email you with the follow-up to this, you can always re just reply to that email and I'll get it and reroute you to whoever you need to be routed to. Um, but this is a, a tool that's really been helpful to us and it's pretty seamless and, um, and clean, which we appreciate and it keeps us on, on track with stuff. So we were really excited to, to share this with you today and kind of give you this inside peek of what that process looks like for us and how Sugar supports the way we wanna do our, our customer service. Um, we will be having another user group in December. Uh, date and topic for that are TBD, but uh, of course, as you know, I will uh, harass you via email <laughs> when that time comes. I will let you know that it's coming um, and we will make sure that you're aware of, of what that is. So I just want to um, thank Justin today again. This was uh, really great to, to get this inside look. And um, yeah, if any questions come up, I don't see any right now, Justin, but of course, if anyone has questions you think of later, um, again, simply just replying to the email that I send you uh, in response to this is great, or you know, reach out to your customer success manager. Either way, um, we're we're happy to support you in any way that we can, and we appreciate your time today. Janine, I forgot to show Sugar Live. We have chat on our portal. Oh, oh, there you go. Even better. All right, wrap up with that then. So there we have it. Uh, chat can come in via our portal. Uh, it can also be placed on our website. We haven't done that yet, but we're looking into it. I can search for cases, uh, existing cases, existing contacts, and all of that good information. And start updating our messages via chat. So some really cool information. This also works for support. If you call one of our support lines, it directs you to Sugar Live and we can answer the phone directly through Sugar CRM. That chat feature ties in with my 2020-2021 uh, my motto, which is omni-channel is, is life. And so, <laughs> um, you know, there's another, you could, they could email, they can chat, you know, you got options. So um, I'm all about it. And this is Sugar Live comes with Sugar Serve. It is powered by Amazon Connect on the back end, which is very inexpensive. I can always dive into a better demonstration of that in another use group. All right. All right. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Justin. And thanks to everybody on the call. You guys have a great week.